So I'm, I'm getting ready to do my treadmill for tonight and I figure, why not? Why not do sort of a news of the day type video for the, the entertainment world as we all look for entertainment stuff to do to distract us from, man, what in the... Anyways, so I wanted to describe to you guys just what I've been putting myself through today. I'm about three seasons into trying to organize the Office episodes from my least favorite to my favorite. That's the next countdown coming up on this channel. Wish me luck, because I'm going to rate every single episode, and I'll try to do 20 episodes per video. That'll be 10 videos. So uh, there's 201 episodes overall, so I'd go from 201 through to 181, and then 180 to 161, yada, yada, yada. You guys get that. And the, the question then becomes, is Diversity Day going to be the worst one? I, I get the feeling it probably is, but I haven't got to Season 8 yet, obviously, and Season 8 has some stinkers. So that's coming up. I'm looking forward to putting that together. I love doing countdowns because people always say, you're wrong. And then my answer is, but it's an opinion. So, all right. Uh, Sonya Deville has come out and said she wants the role of Batwoman. And you know what? I like it. I like the idea of a WWE wrestler who has somewhat of an, a mixed martial arts background, someone who could do her own stunts, although for some uh, insurance reasons that doesn't often happen where an actor is allowed to do their own stunts. You usually have stunt people do them for, for various reasons, and insurance is one of them. But I think it works. And honestly, I think I think Sonya could, could pull it off. I do. And she would be absolutely right in the wheelhouse of what they're looking for for the character. Of course, it would mean she's gone from wrestling for half of a year. But I, I think it would be a great opportunity. So I wish her the best. I hope they give it to her. Um, now, this is an interesting thing that came out as well. Um, Jake Paul apparently is in some hot water. Now, this is noteworthy because I, as a YouTuber, pay attention to what other YouTubers are doing, especially the larger YouTubers. Because when they do stuff that makes advertisers go, uh, that usually means that the income for the rest of us is going to drop. So that's that's been a, you know, Logan Paul obviously uh, had the ire of many YouTubers a couple of years back, and Jake Paul's had it before. Uh, and apparently he was present for some looting at a mall in Scottsdale, Arizona. So this raises the question of, if you see all of this going on and you just mingle about, where does that place you in this? Like, I know if I saw it happening, I'm out of there. I'm gone. But then the question becomes one of, so when he's there, does that make it more likely? Like, one thing I'm hearing on, on TV and just, you know, online, the question gets asked. If people know they're on camera, are they more likely to misbehave? Does, does the social media aspect make it more attractive? Does it mean you're going, hey, look, this is all over TV. We can get on TV. Man, we could totally get on TV. So while there is there is a, a discussion that needs to be had about certain things going on, uh, there is also, there's going to be those people that are like, man, we can get on TV. We can cause all kinds of havoc and get on TV. This would be great. Is Does Jake Paul then fall into the category of, of people who are, like, does this qualify as him capitalizing on it? Like, if, if, it's, if he shoots a video and if he puts it up on this platform and he goes ahead and tries to throw ads on it and advertisers go, pfft we don't want anything to do with this, that's going to affect the rest of us. I've, I've seen it where one of these big scandals happens and it affects everybody on the platform where it's like, great. So now we're, we're losing out because you're, you're not thinking things through. So we'll see. Now the flash, apparently we're going to see Godspeed have a battle with Barry Allen and, uh, Fawn is going to be back again. Apparently, season six's uh, cliffhanger was supposed to be uh, Eobard Thawne having another argued fight with, with Barry. I, I think it shows a weakness in the overall series. I mean, that's me. Now, let me know what you guys think for sure if you're Flash followers. Does it show weakness in the series that they keep going back to the same villain over and over and over again? Or is this just he's basically the Lex Luthor of the Flash universe and I just need to be re be aware that he'll never die. He's never really going to be defeated. And Al Barry Allen's always going to be a step behind him. He's always going to be more intelligent than Barry. It seems to be the case. And I would say that, that the combination of these two uh, is going to be how, how Barry finds a way to keep his speed. Because he's, he's not... 
I would love to have an episode, a whole season of The Flash where he has no speed at all. I think it would be great if the show was called The Flash and other people had speed and he didn't. I think it would be great. I, I do. I think it would be great if Wally was, was somehow able to get his speed and The Flash didn't. I think that'd be cool. But they're also mentioning, you know, I've seen other things online where they're talking about like Jay Garrett could be brought into this. Supposedly he's alive again. Nobody's ever dead on a comic book show. That just doesn't happen. So, you know, even the villains, uh, I, I kind of wish there was a way not to have killed off the thinker. And his wife was really interesting too. And I, I wish they'd found a way to keep her on the show. I thought she was fascinating. She's a very good character. And they could have used her on Team Flash after, but whatever. She's out. She's gone. Just like everybody else. Uh, and I'm, I'm wondering, too, if they're going to find a way to bring Flash's daughter back into it. Like, she wasn't in this season at all, but are they going to find a way? Because, again, nobody has ever gone from a comic book show. Speaking of which, Suicide Squad, they're talking a lot about the director's cut. It's going to be a director's cut. They're going to release a director's cut. It's going to be great. So we get all of this Justice League Snyder Cut talk, and people are like, this is going to be awesome. And now Suicide Squad, they're talking about it in somewhat the similar fashion. I thought Suicide Squad was okay. I enjoyed it as a mindless, fun movie. And certainly there is some, some obvious um, issues with it when it comes to the tone, where the tone really, really shifts, and the villain is awful. The, the real problem with Suicide Squad is that the villain in it just is it's ridiculous. And so that's that's where the main problem is. Uh, Margot Robbie hits it out of the park as as uh, Harley Quinn. And Will Smith is, as Deadshot. Very, very good. And, and just in general, the movie is... I thought the characters were done well enough. Um, and, and then now they're looking at trying to redeem it. And I, I we'll see. Is it going to work? Because Suicide Squad, I think, is a little trickier than Justice League. I, It almost feels like the bar is higher for Suicide Squad than Justice League. Because Suicide Squad, to me, was watchable. And Justice League, eh. So, I, I, I can't. But we'll see. We'll see what they do with it. Um, and then Cineblend, or Cinema Blend has an article up today on six Marvel or DC characters that Alexandra Daddario could play. <clears throat> Alexandra Daddario who's known, of course, for, for the Baywatch movie and for the um, the, the fantasy fantasy movies that she shot before, per, the Percy Jackson movies. And honestly, I was really surprised she wasn't Wonder Woman. I'm going to be completely honest. She is perfect to be Wonder Woman. She, she was perfect. And then they, they gave it to Gal Gadot, and I was like, okay. To me, Gal Gadot, it just, it, it, I, I mean, she did it well. I thought the Wonder Woman movie was well done. But I thought Alexandra Daddario, for me, was one of the actresses that it, it could have worked. She could have played that part. Uh, Sarinda Swan was another one that I thought would have been excellent in that role. And uh, they, they went with Gal Gadot, which worked. I agree. But just physically, Alexandra Daddario, to me, looks like Wonder Woman. You look back at the series from the 70s, you look at the comic book character and Daddario, and she can act as well. So this isn't, you know, this isn't just about trying to find somebody who has that certain look, but they have to be able to act the role as well. And so, yeah, I mean, you could you could pick almost any Marvel or DC character that she could probably play. It's a matter of whether or not that casting is going to take place. She could have been Black Widow. Um, as, as much as, you know, it's Scarlett Johansson's role and everything, she, she could have played Black Widow. We'll see what happens, and if um, she ends up in the DC or Marvel Universe, everybody else does. Uh, she's doing voiceover work for, for other DC Marvel kind of stuff. I think it's a DC uh, cartoon movie she's, she's doing voiceover work for, so she's in that realm. But then again, uh, Kaylee Cuoco is doing the voiceover for uh, Harley Quinn in the Harley Quinn cartoon, which I've tried watching, but it's not great. I, I didn't think it was very good. Uh, apologies if you really like it and you think it's great, that's fine. For me, see, for me, here's the fine line. So, I love Letter Kenny. I love Trailer Park Boys. They both feature gratuitous amounts of swearing. But it works. And it suits the characters. It suits the situation. Clerks, Clerks 2, those movies, the dialogue is coarse and it's brash, but it suits the characters in the situation. When I'm watching... Harley Quinn cartoon and within the first half of the episode I'm like yeah okay all the swearing and all that it, it's it's not 
it it feels forced and it doesn't feel organic and it doesn't feel like it it works and and I you know it's it's weird because again it's not that I'm offended it's that just tonally I don't think it works I it, I just I didn't think it was that that well done and and so I I may dive into it again I may be wrong but having watched the first episode and part of the second one I was like nah just I don't I don't buy it. Now, I know it, it was popular, and I know a lot of people like it, so I'm not going to say anything if, if it's, you know, not, if it is to somebody else's liking, but to me, to me, the language just caught me off guard, where I thought it was just, it was too much. And I, I like, if, if you cut the amount of cursing in half, you'd probably, I think, have a better show. Because, again, when there's so much of it, and it doesn't feel, like, look at Goodfellas. Goodfellas is all of the most coarse, vile language, but they're mobsters. And you get the feeling like this is a realistic conversation between mobsters, and so it's entertaining. And and some of some of it, Pulp Fiction is another one. Some of it you can quote word for word, and it's absolutely amazing. And it's, you know, if I had a dime for every time that I've done the, the Samuel L. Jackson speech about trying to be the shepherd and trying real hard, Ringo, when you're having a bad day, that speech is perfect. And there's swearing in that speech, but it works. And and throughout the movie, there's some really funny lines that, you know, you're you're like, man, I'm laughing at it. That was really coarse, but it really worked. And for me, that's where the Harley Quinn cartoon has its its struggles. And I, I think with the Suicide Squad movie, I think some of it was the tone problems too. Um, it was this brash, really bright movie and and they did their best to keep it pg-13 and i i don't know it just it didn't it something just didn't work and people have complained about harley quinn's outfit in it and when i see that i think did you not read the comic books because you know and i see people go, oh her, 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 her outfits in the comic books you know she's she's completely covered up yeah, this is skin tight where if she sneezes it'll all pop off of her so it's comic books it I, I don't know i didn't even think about it at the time and and hearing now that Margot Robbie wasn't comfortable with it, and that you know she went with something she was more comfortable with in the second movie, good for her. I'm I'm glad that that she had she got her voice about it and she got her way in in the emancipation of of Harley Quinn. But again, for me, just watching the movie, I didn't really think about it that way. I didn't really think it was that because again, that seemed to suit the character, and yet the amount of just the the uh, anyways. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Yep, yeah, I have a Billy Eilish shirt. It it is a men's shirt, in case you're wondering. And it's it's the only only men's shirt I could find that was Billy Eilish. And uh eh, yeah, I I I gen it's it's a genuinely an artist that I like while most of the bands I like are metal. She has her moments. Uh she has some very, very good stuff. I have uh I think I think it's two of her CDs that we have. I don't think there's more than that. Uh in terms of, you know, full-length CDs and you can really tell as she's she's gotten older that her musical tastes have have evolved and the the movie for or the 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 soundtrack song for the new James Bond movie she did excellent absolutely fantastic so there you go let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video thank you guys so much for watching for all your support I will talk to you again soon